pasta become pasta? Hmm, good question, Benny. We are two Italian sisters living in Italy and we're going to be sharing all the stories, the fun stories about how to authentically cook, eat, drink and just simply enjoy the Italian lifestyle. And this is a very fun story fun story so first of all who do we have to say thank you for inventing pasta for inventing something that is loved all over the world nobody <laughs> <laughs> well no one specifically well, no one specific we don't have there's not one person one population one civilization that we have to say thank you for inventing pasta because in in a way shape or form the concept of mixing these <sighs> Yes. I think we should take a step back. First of all, what is pasta? Because this is going to help you yes. understand what she is trying to say. So <laughs> I was explaining it perfectly well. <laughs> well, pasta is simply a mixture of flour and water. Flour of whatever type of cereal it could be. So that is what you were saying. That is exactly what I was saying. Now I sort of lost the... the, the that it is not the father or mother of pasta. Yes, uh, there is no father Does not mother, come no. from any specific civilization. No, because... So it is not Chinese and Marco Polo did not yes. import it to Italy. No. This is a little legend. Yes, it's, it's, not, it's not real. It's not real because so many ancient civilizations have been using this mixture, as she said, of flour and water to create what makes sense to them in that specific time according to their to their to, to what they were eating and, and to their culture so throughout the years we've had the ancient greeks we've had the ancient romans who in some way shape or form had a kind of pasta it was not maybe not called pasta back then but you know add years and years and years and years and then it became what also <laughs> Also, you have to think these, okay, some civilizations were very far apart, so they did not actually have any sort of, of um, influence from each other, but others were close and they contaminated each other. Contamination is wonderful. It's wonderful. So, you know, some passed on some things, the other perfection did, other civilizations brought in new ideas like it happened in Sicily. Like it happened in Sicily when the Arabs invaded Sicily. And the Arabs bought, and still today there's so much Arab influence in Italian food, that is fascinating. But anyway, so the Arabs invaded Sicily and bought this, these forms of what they considered, what, what was to be considered pasta. Uh, but they brought the, the concept of pasta shapes, dry, dry pasta. pasta. Yes, they brought the concept of dry pasta because, you know, they traveled and it was a great way to have something that did not go bad. And so the concept of dry pasta arrived to Sicily and there is one city in particular that was actually the first city that really developed the concept of pasta. And this was a little town in Sicily close to Palermo. Imagine, imagine Sicily being the mom or dad of pasta in Italy, obviously. And yes, yes. And around the 1100s, that's when the first pasta shapes actually started started appearing. And imagine, imagine now, that. Now, Sicily had some things that made it the perfect place to start. First of all, the flour. I think I should do a little story about the flour. Okay, I'm going to go grab a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> now you should know, this is important to understand because when, once you understand the ingredients and where they grow, you then understand why you have certain things in some areas of Italy and not in others. Just to make it very simple, in Italy we have two main types of flour. One is hard wheat flour and that is where you get semolina flour and these these pasta shapes here that are that are yellowish colored. Even to the, I mean, this is store bought pasta. Okay, semolina flour mixes with water, and you get this very very tough kind of dough, and it allows you to make very unique shapes because it stays in shape. And this grows in the hot, sunny, warm south of Italy. In the northern part of Italy, instead, we have a different kind of flour, which is soft wheat flour. It is very weak. And so up north, they added an ingredient which made it usable, which is egg. Usable and unique. Usable and unique. And that is the famous 
fresh egg pasta that everybody loves and everybody knows about worldwide. And the but ingredient that she's talking about is egg. I said it. You did? You weren't paying attention. Probably. Mm. So, <laughs> I know you were though. <laughs> so it's the egg that turns this weak flour into something super elastic-y because you can roll it out this thin, really thin, thinner, okay? Thinner, thinner. And even thinner and make pasta shapes that you cannot make with semolina flour. So imagine that is why you have certain pasta shapes up north that are stuffed because you can make them super thin. So imagine ravioli, tortellini. imagine tortellini, this is a lasagna sheet. So that is why specific pasta shapes, these that are more famous pasta shapes, si. and so, yeah, in a way, yes. Is, because, is, yeah. is from the northern part because of the flour. Now we're talking the, the story of semolina flour, the story of this type of pasta actually starts, you were saying it started in Sicily, but then it... Then, so did you, you talked about flour, the other important characteristics, you have how ah. I pay attention and she forgets. The other important characteristics of why Palermo became such an important city for drying, for, for pasta drying was, other than the flour, the fact that it had sea breeze and sea breeze was such an important characteristic because the pasta had to dry i mean which better way to be dried by the sun and the sea breeze none and uh, and so palermo being a that had all these important characteristics and as pasta moved towards italy so it penetrated the boot because we're shaped like a boot the first city where it developed developed like which is sort of have become the, the emblem of, of, of pasta was Naples. You know, Naples is another is another is another port, and Naples had the perfect what specifically <laughs> the yes. town of uh, Gragnano, which is actually yes, the city of Gragnano is close to Naples, and it has I won't become. Won't interrupt you anymore. Thank you. It has become. It's actually the city of pasta, and it is a very particular kind of pasta still today. It's it's got a specific recognition from the UN from the United uh, from the European Union, so it's a very particular kind of pasta. But I'm not going to get too specific. So Naples is where pasta became creative. It became a thing. They have there are these beautiful historical pictures where you see them actually hanging pasta to dry out on the streets in the piazzas, so that it had the sea breeze and it had the sun, and it was wonderful. And pasta back then was something that was made by hand. Okay, so pasta, believe it or not, once upon a time, was something that only if you had, if you were wealthy, you could eat. If you had pasta, it's because you could afford it. It meant you had people that actually made pasta for you at home. And so it was something that was exclusively for, for, the, for the wealthy. Yeah. But then something happened. Then something happened. That's, was, I think, about 1700s. You know, there was a, a huge um, hunger, well, can, can I correct you a second? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. So around the 16th, around the 1600s, this machine was invented. It, it's called the torchio. Now, torchio made, so imagine it being like a press. Before it was, it was hand-made. So it was something that you, you put the dough inside, you would turn, and at the bottom, there was a disc with various shapes. And so making pasta became, became faster. And not only did it become faster, but it allowed for more creative pasta shapes, uh, a, a consistency of the thickness, and so it became more available. Then in time, you know, first it was done by hand, then it became industrialized. And so it completely changed how pasta was, 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 uh, was, was made, was made, was made and, and introduced. And yeah, it, it became thing, affordable. It became affordable, yes. She's so cute. It became affordable. Now something really funny, uh, which I found fascinating is that Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson, one of the founding fathers of the U.S., he was actually a real foodie, and if pasta was introduced to the states, it's sort of in a way thanks to him because when he was traveling throughout Europe, he saw the torchio, he fell in love with pasta. I mean, who wouldn't fall in love with pasta? And he said, "This is a great food. I want to bring it back." And so when he had his official uh, uh, dinners and lunches, he would make pasta. So he was sort of a pasta influencer all the time. <laughs> Imagine, you know. And and also... I'll go back to the famine. 
Well, the famine is... Okay, so you were saying that pasta, when it was handmade, when mm -hmm. uh, you still didn't have such technologies like the torchio, it was just for the, like, the, the wealthy. Yeah. But then, as people became hungry, because Naples became huge, huge overpopulated, and so there were a lot of problems. And be, thanks to technology, thanks to um, the fact that pasta gradually became more affordable, mm -hmm. it turned into the food of the people. So it's actually pasta is considered the food of the poor because it is very inexpensive, it, it, it fills you up, it gives you lots of energy. And so, you know, pasta really saved a many, many, many oh, yeah. lives. Many, many, many lives. And when she mentioned contamination and how, you know, another city that is also important in, in the development of pasta, mostly in the north, is Genova. Again, Genova is a port. And, and here too, this sort of introduced pasta in the northern part of Italy and then again you know every Italians have the ability to take something and then make it their own according to to their geographical location to the ingredients to the climate to the olive oil to it's they all imagine a beautiful puzzle you need all these little bits and pieces of the puzzle to make the puzzle real and this is the magic of of you know the pasta shapes and the pasta sauces and everything that is intertwined in in the pasta world throughout throughout Italy and Genova, if it does not it does not ring any bell, Genova is the home of of pesto. That rings a lot of bells, right? <laughs> this does ring a lot of bells. So they, you know, they created a type of pasta that, like, the perfect pasta is either like the long pasta linguine or trofie. So gradually, each each town, each each area created. A type of pasta you have like both industrial but then you have many very local shapes that are very specific to some areas and and so they adapted it they adapted it also we have now we just we just talked about two types of flowers but you also have buckwheat flour in the northern part of Italy so there are a lot of other ingredients and then the sauces that were created yep. for each shape. Yeah. But I think that's for another. But that that's is for that's another. Like a, yeah, yeah that's, that's another for video. another thing. But you see, when when you say that, when we always say that pasta is not just pasta. Pasta has a has a very long story. It talks about our culture. It talks about it, it talks about how it really shaped Italy. No, it, pasta did shape Italy. Pasta did shape Italy in a way. That I don't think any other ingredient has I don't shaped think Italy, so. no, because because it adapted and and uh, nowadays when you think about certain dishes, they immediately bring you to a region, to a city, to a town, to 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 the needs, to the necessities, to everything, and uh, you know just by saying something like just by saying orecchiette. It immediately brings you back to Puglia. We're in the heel of Italy. Orecchiette is eaten with that vegetable because that veg. So everything, everything makes sense. Lasagna. Lasagna is all the part of Emilia Romagna, Bologna, in that area there. That this will skip. Yes. <laughs> this <laughs> is is. Is it? No, I I I was gonna tell you something. Go I will just tell you. Imagine that the first form of short pasta. She was dying to do I, this. Dying to do this. I was. I was. I was gonna. Yes, I wanted to surprise you. So the first form of short pasta was actually done with this. This is specifically from the the area of Naples. And how did they do this? They made this long pasta with a hole, and then, ha! I broke the pasta. Look. And this I think this is, is the only actually, time that you're allowed to break pasta. <laughs> and this is actually the first form of short pasta. And still today, this is still done by hand, cut for specific dishes. So pasta is. Do you see when we get excited, and no, you see when we when you say, "Oh, you guys, Italian, your Italians are so." It's it's our tradition. How can it we talks. Not be? This talks about our land. This talks about our culture. And it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's like this, I think it's like a little, many little stories, many books about who we are, why we did things this way. 
And I just love the story of no, pasta. It's, it's so fascinating and it's just, we're going to do another video about the pasta shapes and, uh, and it's just so, there's so much love and so much passion and so much, it's like a mystery plot. It's just like wonderful because everything can be traced back to, to stuff. Yes. And I have a question for you. Ooh, okay. What is your favorite pasta shape? <laughs> What's your favorite pasta shape? I don't have a favorite <sighs> pasta shape. For me, it really depends on the moods. Yeah. But and on the sauce. On the sauce. I can tell you pasta shapes that I hate. This one. <laughs> so this. <laughs> This is something I, that I really don't, I mean, I hate this pasta. I would never eat a pasta with this, ever. Why? Because I just hate it. There. Now, one of my favorite ones that I just, it just excites me, is probably tortellini. Well, that's, that, that, you're playing, you're playing, come on, you should jump facile. You're playing it easy. You're playing it safe. Yeah. Okay. So I'm curious to know, what is your favorite pasta shape? That was a fun story, Ben, that it we was. just shared with you guys. Fascinating.